I just need to find out one thing. Oh, of course. This is so exciting. Hi everyone, it's Melissa, your Plantita Abogada from Tasteful Nodes, coming to you today with a completely out of character video for myself. And I say out of character just because um, the plants that you see in front of me, gorgeous, right? But not something that I'm usually into. In fact, I'm kind of in over my head a little bit, I think. But, you know, I'm sharing this journey with you so that we can go ahead and um, start this addiction together, right? There's strength in numbers, so I hope you guys pull through. So we're doing a bromeliads episode. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce to you plants that I actually purchased from my visit at Villa Gerarda's World of Bromeliads. And I have some really basic repotting tips from Villa Gerarda. So if you're a newbie, a neophyte to bromeliads like myself, come along. Let's get started. Let's enjoy the ride. Okay. Before I get started, though, let's go over our three disclaimers, right? One, I'm absolutely not to be considered an expert when it comes to bromeliads, okay? Don't take my word for anything. I do have labels for the plant names here and I could give you those. I could also give you descriptions of what to expect from the labels. However, what I can't give you is exact um, survival tips for these guys. You know, it's not something I do. And like I said, this is a journey that you and I are gonna share together as newbies, not as experts. Which leads me to my second disclaimer get a second opinion please 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 for the love of your plants get a second opinion i will go ahead and show you what i did buy so it's kind of like a plant haul unboxing video as well but what was shared with me may not work under your growing conditions so find out the people in your area who do grow bromeliads see what they do At, feel free to ask them a lot of the people in the plant community are really caring they're willing to share tips regarding growing don't feel shy um, as far as approaching an expert, your local bromeliad expert, that is. And then my third and final disclaimer, uh, <clears throat> I guess I'm half joking here, right? Is KK Bitayo, Kanya Kanyang Bayad. For our Westerner friends, it means that we each pay our own way. And with these guys, we are absolutely paying our own way. I am introducing these plants to you. If something catches your eye, that's all on you if you pay with this month's rent money. So I'm not paying any plant child support for anything that happens as a result of this video. Okay? And now let's get started. So visited Villa Gerarda's World of Bromeliads. And I did that after coming across, stumbling across one of these guys, right? Now, let me show this to you. Holy cow. I'll go ahead and put a side-by-side -side video of this up close, but talk about beauty and structure, right? I mean, it's both unique, it's alien, it's fun, it's whimsical. It's something that I don't have in my collection, and I was just like, must have. I later found out that these, this one in particular, is called a Bilbergia, and Bilbergia, Bilbergia. I'll go ahead and put the correct pronunciation down there, whether it's a hard G or a soft G, okay? But that was my entry plant, my gateway plant into bromeliads. Some quick research into bromeliads led me to a local grower, specific to my area, which I was really surprised and pleased to see because there aren't many big time growers in my area. And which led me again to Villa Gerarda and Doc Omar. And he was the most gracious of hosts. He went ahead and gave us some time, um, gave us some time to talk about his plants as well as his journey. His trusty assistant slash seller at the Dalal actually led me around the property and gave me a quick tour. But I digress. Before I get too far into it, right? Bromeliads, so there's so, so many of them. They are a huge family, 75 genera and around 3,590 known species, right? And these are just species. These aren't um, including the hybrids, the newly man-made ones. So yeah, it's a huge, huge family, but you would be surprised but what this encompasses, okay? So these are all considered bromeliads, but they're all very different. If you guys are familiar with tillanches, we commonly call them air plants. 
that would be these guys here in the corner. So a Bilbergia right here. We have a Neo Regalia right here, these guys. We have a, I can never get it right, an Orthophytum right over here. We have a, oh gosh, this one's fun. I think it's a Aerococcus flagellifolius, flagellifolius, Aerococcus flagellifolius. So I'll flash the name of that, that plant at the bottom of the screen just so you can read it and stumble with me, right? And, you know, something that we normally eat and don't realize is a bromeliad. Uh, the humble pineapple is a bromeliad. So this family is huge and there's so much to collect. There's so much to look at if you're into colors, if you're into size, if you're into shapes, right? Yeah, check this guy out, tube. Or if you're into texture, like this guy, he's a little bit furry. So there's something for everyone. And whether you're into the pretty pinks or the oddities, like the flagellifolius, I mean, there really is something for everyone to collect. Now, I'm not trying to sell these to you, okay? I'm just saying, if you're looking for a new plant to get into to collect, something that not everyone's into, you might want to consider bromeliads. Now, with that being said, I live in a climate that's probably near perfect for bromeliads. I believe that they are, yeah, so they are located within the Americas, right? We're looking at South America, Central America, but they're also grown widely across the United States. So we've got some growers in Florida. We have some growers in Hawaii as well. If you notice Florida and Hawaii, quite tropical. So the Philippine climate, I mean, although we do have several microclimates, is perfect for growing bromeliads, right? And this guy, hmm, is there anyone else? This guy has been with me for the longest time and I did not know that he was a bromeliad. I truly didn't, but he acclimated and I didn't even know how to care for him. He just went with it. I mean, he's given me a pup, he's flowered, looks like we're turning to seeds now. And I mean, and that's all due to the Philippine climate, maybe a little bit due to my potty mix, which we'll get into a little bit, but pretty much due to the climate. It's dry here, it's hot, stuff that they thrive in, right? Now, as far as what I said earlier, um, potting mix. So this poor plant um, was my guinea pig and is doing wonderfully. With that being said, apparently I was doing the whole thing wrong. Doc Omar, according to Doc Omar, what you wanna do is you actually wanna have, um, okay, so this is the Neoregalia dragon, right? pretty, pretty plant. What you want to have is half of your pot full of charcoal. And here in the Philippines, we don't really treat our charcoal with anything. I don't know if you can bust, bust out a bag of briskets in the U.S., but I would see to see if, I would check to see if the label has any additives to it. Otherwise, what Doc Omar suggested is just put half a pot full of charcoal, right? There we go. And the other half full of coconut cubes, or I guess coconut husks, if you're in an area of the Philippines where you have more husk than cubes, right? So the reason for this being, he said, is that we want the substrate holding the plant to be very well draining. Now, if you are familiar with talanches at all, you know that we don't put our talanches in any media, right? We hang them and we water them on occasion, or if you're like me, you leave them to the elements because the elements here are near perfect. So we want for these guys, for the bromeliads that are in front of me right now, the neoregalias, the, the acmeas, the bilbergias, we want those guys to be in a half pot of charcoal and we want to have the other half be coconut cubes. And this is according to the man with 6,000 bromeliads. So I think I would trust him. <laughs> and I'll have to go report back to him in September. So um, trust me, I, I don't want to mess this up, especially since they're really, really pretty plants. And voila, here we go. It's quite stable, um, good to go. 
And let me go ahead and repot maybe a couple while I give you some care tips, while I share some care tips that he shared with me. Mm -hmm. Who do we want to do? Let's do this guy. I'm really excited to have him. This is a Bilbergia um, Rafael Oliveira. Oliveira, yes. So with this guy, they said that as far as repotting is concerned, he repots twice a year, so every six months. But for the first repotting, it's just half of your substrate. He doesn't want to like repot the entire thing. The reason he said he doesn't want to repot the entire thing is because everything is mostly good except for the charcoal. So the charcoal is the problem here. While it is well draining, it dries fast and it's super well draining. What happens is that it turns into mush over time. And this is especially exposed to the rains, rainy season here in the Philippines, right? So the rainy season here can be a little bit unforgiving. There's a whole bunch of typhoons in the area. Depends really on whether we're in El Nino or La Nina, to be honest. But under those conditions, the charcoal breaks down faster and therefore must be replaced. Otherwise, it would provide a lot of places for water to stay in and it would actually cause water log. Water log means root rot. We don't want that in any of our plants, um, whether it be aeroids or bromeliads. So that's why he suggests doing a half potting mix change and doing that in six months. So every six months, but after one whole year is he says, you know, you might want to just do the entire thing. No fighting guys, dogs are fighting. So there we go. So we discussed potting, right? Let's go ahead and talk about um, watering because that's really important with these guys too. Now, as far as water is concerned, we want to water when the substrate is dry, but we also need to make sure that we keep the cup um, right here in the middle. We keep it with water inside as well. And while it's not recommended for colder places, I'm guessing to keep water in there just because you know it won't drain as fast, it's perfectly fine for the Philippines because it's hot and the plant will take whatever water it needs from this little center cup, right? There's a term for it. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but I'll go ahead and flash at the bottom of the screen for you. So when you're watering, be sure that there's water in the cup, you know? Make sure that it is dry before you water because otherwise you're just gonna drown your plant. Same thing applies to aeroids, same principle. So what surprised me about this discussion with Doc Omar was that he said he actually waters his Brahms every single day. And watering bromeliads every single day right now makes sense because it's the dry season. And where we live, we live in a microclimate where, um, gosh, see, I'm sweating like a beast as, as it is. So we live in a microclimate where it's a tropical savanna, literally tropical savanna. The trees aren't touching each other. There's lots of light on the ground, meaning there's not a lot of humidity and it's not very cool because there's a lot of sun, as you could probably see behind me. So in areas like mine, you do want to go ahead and water every day during the summer. Hilda, oh, she's such a fame whore, I tell you. Anyway, oh God, can I say that word? <laughs> anyway, um, I'll go ahead and repot one more plant, maybe two more. So we discussed potty media, we discussed, we discussed watering, right? And now I want to discuss lighting, and this is really important for the Philippines. So as far as lighting is concerned, oh, okay. Plant wants me to, wants to remind me to introduce itself. So this, my friends, is a Bilbergia Darth Vader. Yeah, side note, they have some really cool um, bromeliads named after Star Wars and Star Wars characters. Another of my fandoms that's colliding with my plant fandom. So I'm just thrilled to pieces about that. But anyway, I digress. So lighting, right? What happens with lighting here is we've got a lot of it here on the farm. I mean, the trees aren't touching, like I said, and there's just natural light that comes through. 
what happens is during the summer it might be a little too much it really is harsh harsh lighting and that can cause your leaves to burn I mean coloring for the bromeliads comes out with good lighting but too much light can cause burns to the leaves and we don't want that so in terms of Philippine needs we want to go ahead and put these guys where it isn't like exposed to direct sunlight but it is exposed to bright light. And welcome home, Darth Vader. <sighs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, so we talked about lighting, we talked about potting mixture, we talked about watering. Hmm, am I missing anything? What, what are our normal potting media, watering? Uh, they're epiphytes. So that explains, the, again, the charcoal and the coconut. If you do want to put them on a tree, I suppose that can happen. I've seen some people do living walls. There's a guy in, was it Indonesia, the one who you follow? Indonesia or Singapore? We'll go ahead and link or um, include a little picture to his Instagram because he puts out amazing stuff. But his stuff, his bromeliads are all just epiphytic. So pretty amazing stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue repotting, but I think that I've covered everything. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna continue this journey with me, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, check me out on Facebook. I'm there as Tasteful Nodes as well. And if you just wanna see update pictures, get straight to it. See me on Instagram, I'm there as Tasteful Nodes. Okay guys, until next time, sa so ulitin. Keep your notes classy and tasteful. Bye now.